And this is why personal development fails so much because it's not easy. And anyone who tells you that rewiring your brain is this quick, you know, seven day thing, it just doesn't know what they're talking about. And it sets people up for such disappointment. You have to understand that it is a, you spent decades, decades of your life, depending on how old you are, being wired unconsciously. You're just now, you're just now trying to be conscious about it. Biology has to change. Old neural pathways have to die off while you grow new ones. This does not happen like this. Hello, uh, welcome to Soul Awakenings with Madia Sosan podcast. Today we have a very special guest with us and his name is Bob Doyle. Now, Bob Doyle is best known for teaching law of attraction principles as a featured expert in the film and the book, The Secret. He discusses what really makes the biggest difference in a person's ability to create what they want in their lives, whether that's through utilizing law of attraction principles or any other method, and why the success rate with the personal development is so low. He'll also tell you what you need to do in order to beat those odds and assure your success. So guys, I'm really, really looking forward to interviewing Mr. Bob Doyle because I've been following Law of Attraction for so long and I wanted to meet someone from The Secret and it just happened. I manifested Mr. Bob Doyle at a business event over a year ago and since then I've been following him and been in contact with him and eventually I asked him to come on this podcast and he agreed and I'm so super, super excited as you know and I'm pretty sure he will help you out if you're stuck in manifesting things if you're stuck with low, low attraction you don't know what it is he he's the perfect person to help you out so without further ado let's bring him on hi mr bob how are you doing i'm doing great madi it's always great to hang with you oh it's amazing like because like i met you when did when did i meet you two years ago over two years ago it couldn't have been. No, I think it was uh, 2000. Well, wait, 2019. Yeah. yeah. So it's just over a year in, in London at an event. Yeah. And I came in with the fist bump and yeah. <laughs> you sure did. You barreled right into my personal space with your fist bump and asked me to do an interview or whatever. And yeah. it was just you were just I couldn't say no. Yeah, yeah, because like I wanted to manifest someone. I was watching The Secret. I wanted to manifest someone from The Secret. Um, and I was like so focused on it two days, like, yes, I want to manifest someone. And then I just forgot about it, you know, years later, there you are <laughs> right in front of me. So, That's right. Yeah. You wasted no time, I can tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> manifesting. I'm very good at manifesting. Before we talk about The Secret, um, I want to know, uh, what uh, your life was like before, like, you know, what we, we, was there anything that you were struggling with and why did you start teaching the law of attraction in first place? Yeah. So my career aspirations were always broadcasting. My dad was in radio and TV and, and that just looked like the most fun ever to just talk and get paid. And so that's what I trained myself for and studied for in school. And that was my first job out of college was, you know, so I did like seven years of radio and, and some voiceover and that type of thing. But it ended up not being the creative outlet that I spent my childhood hoping that it would be only because I was working in a major market in, in Atlanta, Georgia. And, you know, you just kind of have to work your way up. And I just didn't have the patience for that because my first job in radio was in a smaller market and I could do whatever I wanted. So I went from being able to do whatever and just be as silly as I possibly could be uh, with no one telling me not to, to here, read this card. So mm -hmm. it just wasn't, it just wasn't creative for me. Like, like I thought it was going to be. So that sort of led to jumping around from various careers that at the time seemed disjointed, but later all, all the skill sets came together later as, as life will unfold. But, but because all of these other things that I was trying weren't taking off, like I tried to start my own businesses because I, I realized pretty early I was not a very good employee because I just had a problem with creative control. I just I just wanted to do what I wanted to do. And I just didn't like anyone telling me what to do or not mm -hmm. to do. So, you know, so entrepreneur seemed to be where I was headed. But everything I tried was just, you know, just not taking off at all, no matter how much. 
I thought it should have. Like on paper, this should have been working. So when I tried all the practical things I could try to, to get a career going and it wasn't working, I thought, well, there's got to be something else going on that, that is beyond just the physical reasons. So that's when I started looking in sort of more metaphysical directions and started learning more about meditation and visualization and just the whole concept that, that we could even create our reality. And I got very excited about what I was reading and in fact started to put programs together even before I had fully you know, realized results, which I think is a very common thing in the industry. But I, I put together, here's how to do all this. And it just wasn't taking off either. And I was just, what is going on? I mean, these are the principles that that should be working. But it was eventually I, I was led to, and this is a whole long story that I will not tell, but I was led to a book that talked about quantum physics, just a little bit, just enough to, to make me realize that our thoughts, good, bad, positive, negative, they have real impact on what happens in our life. And so at that, at that moment, that was kind of my aha moment. And I was able to look at what was I saying, what I was saying out loud was that I wanted to have a successful career, doing what I love, work at home, make a lot of money, all that stuff, get rid of debt. But inside my conversation was very much that money is hard to come by. There's always going to be debt and it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter if you like what you do, you just need to do it to make money because that was the programming I received growing up. I mean, that was, my mom was a, a school teacher, single mom. So money was always an issue. We were always in debt and all of those things that I just said. So that was a part of my, you know, what I'm now calling my wiring, but it was definitely a part of my vibration, if you want to talk on the law of attraction point of view. So once I became aware of that, then I was able to sort of take the things I had been learning and utilize them in a different way with more intention and know, knowing that I really had to change that inner conversation, not just what I was saying out loud and affirming and, you know, whatever. Once I started doing that and started getting some results and some shifts, that's when I first put together uh, my Wealth Beyond Reason program, which at the time was mostly other people's work that I had, I basically compiled it. I was more of a facilitator of the program and I shared sort of my insights at that time. Um, and it was just a small little modest package. However, one of the key things that I learned shortly thereafter was this distinction of claiming who am I going to be in this conversation? And, you know, what I thought what I had started out was one day I'll be as successful as so and so or whatever, you know, I'll, I'll understand this as good as so and so one day. But I realized that one of the key principles here is, is who you're being now, not later. And so my conversation about who I was in this, in this industry changed to, you know, I, I'm going to be an effective communicator of these principles to as many willing, open minds as possible. No, not I am going to be. I am. I am an effective communicator in these principles to as many willing minds as possible. And that changed everything because once I started, once I claimed that this is who I am now, that's when the the download started, right? That's when the program went from being, you know, 10% Bob, 90% other people to, you know, 99% Bob and 1% the other people because the program just grew and grew and grew as I was getting more and more, you know, aha moments and distinctions and just creating more content for the program. That program was out there floating around for about three years and it, it changed my life. I mean, I did get out of debt. I was loving what I was doing. Like the dream had happened. It, it, it was exactly what I wanted, but it was at, it was in 2005, about three years after I put out the program, that Rhonda Byrne, who created The Secret, was sort of on the search for law of attraction information, trying to find teachers who were teaching this information. Mm -hmm. And so she found my program. And I'm sure that because it was so vast, and it was also because I was talking from a, a scientific a point of view as I could, like, I'm just, I mean, I was a broadcaster who stumbled upon these, these principles. I was not a career personal development person. I was just an average normal person who learned about these principles and it made an impact. And then I decided to go ahead and teach them because I was able to combine my years of broadcasting and all the other things that I had acquired skill sets for to be able to deliver a program online and do it to the quality that I was able to do it. So it all just was this wonderful orchestration of events that seemed like I was going nowhere. And then it all just kind of came together wonderfully. So then that, so that's how I ended up in the secret. And then of course, you know, lots of things changed after that. Do you think that it was it had to be internal work first before it manifested outward? Absolutely, because I was trying to do all the outward stuff for years and not getting anywhere. Mm. The the inner the inner conversation was absolutely stopping me and I didn't realize it until I had done enough study to be 
you have to be honest with yourself too. There's a lot of people out there who say, oh yeah, I'm, you know, all about the law of attraction and they post their inspirational quotes and all this stuff. And they're, they're really just masking a lot of inner conversation about insecurity, self-confidence. They don't know whether for sure they believe this or not, but it sure seems nice. You have to be able to be brutally honest with yourself about what's going on if you ever hope to change it. Because just denying that you have a limiting belief is not going to make it go away. You can own it and realize it's just that. It's just a belief. It's just a program running. And it got in there unconsciously from external sources. But now that we're conscious about how our brain works, et cetera, we can, make, we can be conscious about our changes. We can be intentional about who we want to become and the results we want to have in our lives and, and actually make you know seeming miracles occur just because we're, we change our predominant thought about who we're being. Hmm. Um, were you like r really, really spiritual before you got into all of this? Were you no. really into No, so no, not at all. I had had then. a, I'd had a super religious experience, like in high school, I went to the whole born again thing and I was chasing around people with Bibles and stuff. And, you know, at that age, and my maturity level, that didn't go well. That did not go well. <laughs> and so I did what yeah. most teenagers do. I eventually rebelled against the whole thing. So everything spiritual was just like, I'm not even going there. So it really wasn't until I got back into this conversation with meditation and visualization and looking at the nature of the universe and spirituality in a different way, not just through religion, but, you know, spirituality, energy, quantum, everything. You know, it was just, there was a, when I really got that we are, all connected. We are one big, vast ocean of energy. It gave me a different take on spirituality. Mm -hmm. And it's still, I still don't consider myself like, you know, I think if you think just a, a spiritual person, I'm probably not that either in, in terms of like just how I live and talk and stuff like that. But I have my own spiritual relationship with all that is that, whereas before I just, you know, I denied it all. I think that's how it should be. It's not just one way of being. You can connect with the source in many different ways in your own way. You can be sitting in the car and connecting with the source. So, you know, you don't Absolutely. have to meditate. Yeah. And that is one of the things that, you know, is such a bugaboo about this whole law of attraction conversation and manifesting in general is that people think there is this one way and they have to get it right or it's not going to work. And oh my God, people just waste their waste years mm -hmm. doing that. Absolutely. And that's one of the, the, one of the, after the secret came out and everybody was expecting magic in, you know, 24 hours, my whole conversation had to change, mm -hmm. you know, to, to sort of start addressing these oversimplified misconceptions about what the law of attraction is so that people don't give up on it because mm -hmm. the program they bought that promised three easy steps to anything you want didn't work, you know, and that's, it happened a lot. People bought a bunch of programs because everybody jumped on the bandwagon in the personal development space or they weren't in it. They, a lot of internet marketers saw an opportunity and they just used their marketing skills to put together a quick thing, which did not work at all. Mm -hmm. And so people started going, well, this law of attraction thing doesn't work. They started looking at it like it's some personal development tool because that's how it was packaged. And it's none of those things. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, my, my sort of, my focus was like, just demystifying all of that stuff and saying, look, it doesn't have to be, it, it's, it can occur as no less magical, but it's not magic. You know, there's a real science to this and a lot of it, you, and, and especially my, my message today is you don't even have to believe the law of attraction. You don't have to understand it. You don't have to have heard of it because the transformation ultimately is taking place in your brain. When your brain changes, then all the law of attraction stuff just kind of works automatically and you don't have to freaking obsess over it like so many people do. Mm, yeah, so going back to obviously the secret, it's been 14 years now has it's, it's come out since it's come well, out for 13, 14 years, 15 years. It wow. came out in 2015 yeah. online. So we're in our, yeah. we're getting into our 16th year here. Yeah. So how do you describe the impact of it? Obviously it's like well, uh, worldwide, well known now. So how do you describe yeah. it in your own words? Well, I mean, I think, you know, there's, there's, two main reactions it got. One was like, oh, this is the greatest thing ever. And this is what I've always thought. And, you know, it's so cool to find out that other people think like me. And I've just always done this, you know, very positive. When the secret first came out, it was online. And the only people who really knew about it were the people who were basically on the emailing lists of the people who were in it. So most people who saw the film were already way on board because they'd been indoctrinated sort of into these principles from these various teachers. So it was you know, hugely positively received. When it got out on DVD, 
And a lot of well-meaning people said, looked out at the people in their life, said, you need to see this. You need to see. Nobody likes to be told that. So it was more of a, you have to see this. This will fix you, that kind of stuff. And, and depending on the person, you show them a movie like The Secret. If they've had no exposure to any of these principles, it can be extremely confronting. There's lots of reasons to go. This is, you know, for them to logically say this is nonsense, right? Because it's so, it's so outside their paradigm. And so that's when the, the naysayers came up. And then when you have naysayers, you got people who are just, just vehemently against it, you know? And so it became this very highly debated thing. So I think The Secret did an amazing thing in terms of bringing awareness to this principle to people who would have never seen it, but it also, and it created a lot of interesting conversation. Yeah. I think the, the problem was, is that the, how it was handled after, not by the producers of The Secret per se, but by all these people who jumped on the bandwagon thinking that they knew what they were talking about, you know, which was an impact of The Secret actually could have caused more harm than good for a lot of people. So, but overall, I mean, I, it's definitely a positive thing, a positive force. Nothing's even come close to it since then, although many have tried and I've been a part of those projects, but the secret had a certain sauce. And I, I really think it was Rhonda's, Rhonda knew more than anybody that it was going to be a success. I mean, cause she, she was just in that conversation of the law of attraction. And she explained to all of us who were part of the project, who, who had our amount of healthy skepticism as to whether or not this was ever going to take off and who would ever see this. And was this really going to make an impact? She always knew. And it did, you know, yeah. it, it absolutely did. Uh, you know, one of the things that I, whenever I watch the secret or come across any events that I go to listen to watch about law of attraction, there's one thing that they keep talking about is if you're in a negative state, go straight way into the positive state in order to manifest something positive faster. And um, it's I feel like that's kind of dangerous because it's you're kind of um, bypassing the healing. You know, there are certain time amount of time you need to be in, in the negativity, you know, to, in order to heal something, you know, we come in, we have to combine a little bit of spirituality, healing, uh, pa past life traumas, or, you know, past like your trauma in this world. Um, so what are your thoughts on that? You know, where people um, get so fearful of negativity that they jump to positivity without even healing anything. Well, so I've got several thoughts on that. Number one, yes, it, there's, this is not about never experiencing a negative emotion. We were created with them for good reasons. It's, it's contrast. If we didn't have the negative, we wouldn't be able to fully appreciate the positive. To me, the, the, the negative feelings are a signal that your body is giving you. I mean, negative feelings are chemical. That's when it comes right down to it. And this is why I've so focused into the science piece of this. If you have negative feelings, it is because you're creating brain chemistry that is making you feel negative. And that is the result of the thoughts that you're thinking. And the thoughts have meaning that you give to it because of your programming. So there's, there's no meaning to anything until we give it that meaning. And we give it that meaning, again, based on how we run it through our little computer and make meaning out of it. That meaning creates an emotional, a thought that creates emotion, which creates chemicals. And now we're negative. So... And yes, depending on the, the, the type of negativity, I mean, certainly like if a loved one dies, there's this whole grieving process, you need to go through it. So it's not about abandoning that or pretending they're not there. However, there is a pervasive issue with people hanging on to the negative emotions, clinging to them, defining themselves by them, repeating them over and over about themselves because they've had a consistent result. And so every time they have a result, that they have learned to perceive as negative. They go, there it is again, there it is again. And they just wire themselves to become, to be a person who sees through a negative lens. That's not healthy. Mm -hmm. That is not the, that, that's not, a, that's not the appropriate, I guess, use, if you will, of, of negative emotions. People will cling to negativity to be right. They would rather be right than happy. You know, they'd rather prove why they couldn't accomplish something or why something is bad out there than to just, you know, choose a different thought. It comes down to mastery of life and transformation comes down to the art of being able to become aware when you are on autopilot, when you are 
acting uh, through wiring that is not serving you uh, at all. It's not giving, it's not a healing thing at all. It's just immersing. It's just, you're, you're, you're immersing yourself in negative chemistry. You're creating the same thoughts over and over. You're making more, you're making that wiring more and more uh, powerful so that you cannot even see positivity because this lens you're looking through. And again, you feel completely justified in your negativity. That's when, it, that's when it's gone wrong. Mm -hmm. I, I absolutely agree. I think for, for me personally, what works best is when I'm manifesting things is allow myself to be in that negative state. And then, and then once I'm done with all my healing or whatever, I can get up and then I was like, okay, let's, t you know, I think your body already knows when to switch to positivity. For Some me, do. Yeah. Your intuition, like not many people tap into their intuition. It's like, okay, you, now's the time this week you've had I don't know you had a heartbreak you can be in bed be negative about it and then and then when and then it's like you you kind of get bored of it and then you're like automatically in positive state and you start you man manifesting positive things well again that's that's for people that's that's the good case scenario people mm. like you who are who have uh, who are conscious to the degree that they can see that this is just a process this is this is biological as, as well as spiritual and all these other things. I have to process these things, but I know that I will, this, this too shall pass, mm -hmm. but other people do not do that. They go, here it is again. And that's, it becomes permanent only because they just keep feeding it. They could end it if they wanted to, mm -hmm. but they're, but they're not, they're not committed to wanting to, it feels too dangerous because all they know is their negativity and proving it right wishing for something positive or seeing something positive for themselves seems way too risky because they don't have any evidence that it's going to happen. So they're just setting themselves up for, for more disappointment. So they'd rather just stay in their safe little negative spot, which isn't safe at all. It's not, they're not living a life. They're not growing. It's just, they're, they're surviving. Mm. So if any of our listeners who are in that state right now, what are the first steps that they can do to get themselves in a good place they the very first thing is mastering that art of becoming aware that you are in fact responding to wiring that the truth any truth that you're giving to the situation whether it's positive or negative is you're making meaning out of it hmm. all there is is a situation there's just an event an energetic event that looks this way we take all of this input and we run it through our machine and we go, okay, well, what I know about this, that, and the other thing, and what I expect about, you know, all of these things, this is a good thing, or this is a negative thing. If it's positive, great, just go with it. But if it's negative, you get to, if you can learn, and this is not easy. And this is why personal development fails so much because it's not easy. And anyone who tells you that rewiring your brain is this quick, you know, seven day thing, it just doesn't know what they're talking about. And it sets people up for such disappointment. You have to understand that it is a, you spent decades, decades of your life, depending on how old you are, being wired unconsciously. You're just now, you're just now trying to be conscious about it. Biology has to change. Old neural pathways have to die off while you grow new ones. This does not happen like this. But every time you think, every time you stop yourself and choose, how could I be different than I am right now? What's another meaning I could give this? You create different neurotransmitters. And if you do that consistently enough, they turn into actual physical things and real wires in your brain. But that's why if you go to a seminar and you get all excited or watch the movie and you get all excited and these neurotransmitters go, oh, I've got it. I've got a shift. I see it this way. Well, this isn't enough to be permanent. This is temporary. You have to sustain that for your brain to actually grow and for your old wiring to, to, to wither. Mm -hmm. And so the first time you get a trigger that up from that is in, you know, consistent with your old wiring, you'll go right back there. So if you're not conscious of going, oh, wow, I just, I just went back to my old wiring. The danger is you'll go, oh no, this is what's true. Not this thing that I was so hopeful about. What's true is this negative stuff. It's not true. You've just gone right back to your old wiring. It, it will be true for you as much as you say it is because you will act in alignment with that being true and you will get the results that are congruent with a person who is acting in alignment with someone who believes that they're limited or believes that it's never going to work for them or whatever. It all translates, all this spiritual invisible stuff ultimately translates into physical action that everybody can see, no magic involved. And mm -hmm. your 
your internal conversation far more than your external conversation will determine how you show up for people, whether or not they trust you, whether or not they want to do business with you, engage with you, be your friend, fall in love with you. All of these things, these inner things, not what you keep saying with the fake smile and the inspirational quotes. You've got to do the inner work so that you can be authentically congruent with who you're putting yourself out there to be. Yeah, so the you know work and it radiates outward, and it's it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect, and I guess like being aware of it is the first step um, yeah. to um, to manifesting. Uh, th Do you think um, sensitivity plays a huge part in manifesting? Because I've heard a term: uh, the more sensitive you are, the easier it is for you to tap into uh, the energies. You know, well, it depends. I mean, sensitive could mean a lot of things, but it, it, I still think it comes down to awareness. You know, if you're not aware of certain things, like let's just talk about sensitivity on a human term, like you're, I'm an insensitive person or I'm not. If I make an insensitive remark to somebody, it basically means I was not aware of who they really are, what their needs are, what they said, what their, how their feelings might be affected by what I say. I'm insensitive because I'm not aware. And so same thing, I guess, in this, in this example, you know, you, you do, if you're not aware, for example, if you're not sensitive to the fact that you are in fact wired and you're responding on autopilot, then you're not going to make the changes because you don't think you can. It doesn't even occur to you that you can change it, you, that you can actually manifest something different because it's to you, it's just truth. This is how it is. The world sucks. And me too, you know, there's no, there's there, without that, thought that, oh my God, I'm just running a program and there's no truth to this. If you're not sensitive to that truth, then yeah, you're not going to, you're not going to change. Same thing with, I guess, if you're sensitive to how things are showing up as a relate, as it uh, relates to your change in vibration or your behavior, you know, if you're not seeing, if you're not aware of the situations that are coming to you, the opportunities that are coming to you, how people are responding to you, then you could miss a lot. So, you know, in that context, that's that's two different ways that sensitivity, I think, could come into play. Mm, oh, that's brilliantly put. Thank you for that. I'm, I'm sure many of our listeners would be, um, you know, especially empaths and sensitive. <laughs> it would be good news for them. So after watching or reading The Secret, I'm sure you hear um, about how it's not working or how people are getting inconsistent results and, you know, keep manifesting the si similar things all the time. Why do some people succeed with this and others seem to fail? It's exactly what we've been talking about. Some people, it's all about, were they able to change the wiring in their brain? Ultimately, that's what's happening. Were they consistent enough? Were they persistent enough to, to, to make, to allow those changes to take place? Did they have a vision of who they wanted to be before they started creating a vision of what they wanted to have? That's, that's the, the number one step that people miss is they learn about the law of attraction. They go, oh, I want the house, I want the car, I want the money. But a lot of that is driven by this need to solve a problem that they've got. So they're, all of their attention is really on their problem and they've skipped who, who they want to be in the world. Like if they're going to have a different life, if they're going to attract different things, they have to be a different person because everything they've got in their life is a result of who they've been being. Just having a vision board of, of pictures and stuff like that is not going, if you don't change who you're being, you're still going to get the same results mm. in the world because you're going to behave and talk and think and do everything like that, except you've also got a vision board. Mm. There's no magic here. This needs to shift you into a different way of being. So you get to define who that is. And, and that's, I want to underline that too, because a lot of people spend years trying to figure out who they are. Like, who am I really? Who am I supposed to be? It's whoever the freak you want to be. That's mm -hmm. the beauty of this brain and its, its plasticity. So we are right now, now we're born with all these various traits and personality, uh, you know, uh, passions and things like that that are sort of individual to us, but we are wildly impacted and, and molded by our environment. You know, the beliefs of our parents or teachers or clergy or the news or whatever, because we weren't aware that we could actually evaluate what was coming in mm -hmm. and assess, well, this is, this works for me or it doesn't. So depending on who you are and how you were brought up, you know, you're going to have a different level of, of, of results than other people. And one of the things that really is a killer for people is they compare their results with other people. They go, well, I, the, my friend watched The Secret and then she got a new car the next week and I haven't been, I'm going backwards. You, 
that's she's a totally different person with a totally different brain, totally different wiring, totally different action. Absolutely everything is different. You cannot compare. She, she could have been raised in, in an environment where all she just needs a little tweak in her attention, whereas you might need a complete overhaul. Mm -hmm. But the good news is, is that, you know, just start start the overhaul, however long it takes. You've either got the rest of your life to get no changes or you take a couple of years or whatever it takes to define yourself and become that powerful being so that the rest of your life can be freaking awesome. You know, but it's, it's a learning process and it takes time, just like everything else in our life that was ever worth learning, walking, talking, it took time, it took stumbling, it took mistakes, it took feedback, you know, and, and, a, and a, like a blind desire, like I am doing this. There's, I don't have an option here. I'm going to walk. I'm going to talk. I'm going to do these things. If we approached our transformation in the same way, we would, we would succeed more, but people don't. Yeah. So what, like, do you think it's best to just go into your cave and heal whatever you need to heal first and then go out and then start comparing? Cause I know we're, we live in an age of social media comparing, comparing with each other is so, so easy. Well, you, you, the cave probably isn't going to work for most people because if you're just in a cave and working on yourself with no input, no help, no coaching, no nothing, you're going to immediately come up against your own wiring. You won't know what you won't know. You will not be able to see yourself through any other lens. You've got to have somebody help you through when you reach the limits of your wiring to help you develop this new vision of yourself and reinforce it and reinforce it and let you tap into how great it's going to be to be that person. By yourself, the odds are very low. It can happen but the odds are very low that you will do the transformation. You will complete the transformation because you're gonna go up against your wiring and you're not gonna know what to do. And everything in your mind and experience tells you this is a futile attempt. You're mm -hmm. never gonna make it. Mm -hmm. Why even try? And then, so then people give up and it's just another, it's just even more stronger wiring that's gonna make it harder for them to do it later. Now, but I will say, so maybe you don't go into a cave, but you definitely get very choosy about where you're getting input, right? You don't immerse yourself in freaking social media and the bad news and the nonsense that's out there. You find people who are on the same page as you, who want to create a world for themselves and others that is, you know, abundant and prosperous and filled with love and hope and amazingness, right? You, you need to find those people so that that's the conversation that is being fed into your brain and creating new wiring. Mm -hmm. So in a way you, you, you withdraw from the, from the, the, the noise that is not serving you, but you, you are going to need support. Yeah, I, I can the the reason why I said that because when I went through my own spiritual awakening, I completely detached myself from everybody. There were people falling out of my life. There were uh, situations falling out of my life, and it was it was almost like my spirit guides or universe or something backed me in the corner to heal what you are sort of like look at yourself. Uh, almost like a mirror to myself and I had to do that and for about three years I was constantly you know um, healing and and I didn't tell anyone what I was doing um, so I, I guess it goes back to it goes back to healing what's within you first in order to uh, sort of like you know manifest outward because uh, when I was in that state, there was nobody around me. There was no knowledge of going on. The only the only knowledge that I had was all the YouTube videos. That was what yeah. it was still coming in, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it was like I was guided in that direction. In in like uh, something that I needed to know, I would get that sort of like uh, a sign from the universe. It's like you need to read this, um, and then. And then when I was in the right vibration, I started manifesting amazing people into my life, amazing situations and like, you know, and uh, and that's that's why I think the, the cave, being in the cave is really important as well to, in order to find yourself. And then and then you'll know when's the right time to go out and take action on it. I, I will say that, I mean, yes, for people like you. <laughs> you anyone who's watched this podcast and and had any time with you know that you are an exceptional case and most people are not like that they go into a cave and feel sorry for themselves and can spiral so again it just depends on what the cave looks like and what what works for you and it's possible that if you had had more you know personal support or somebody you know you said there you didn't have that so you you went 
to your cave and you watched YouTube or whatever. But maybe if you had had something else, it could have been a little quicker than three years. But the point is you were, you were committed to doing it. You, giving up was not an option. And for too many people, giving up is, is an option because they just go right back to, well, I'm not dead. I can at least get through my day. I guess this is just my life. They can get resigned, but you and, and, and there are people, you know, like you who just will not give up and will keep doing whatever it takes and going through the growth. Um, you know, so again, it, it comes down to an individual thing, what your background was, what is driving you, what is pushing you to become this better version of yourself. And for some people, if there's, if their why isn't strong enough, if they didn't hurt enough to make a change, as soon as it gets a little bit uncomfortable, they can just go, well, you know, I just, I'm not going to do this right now. I'll do it later. Yeah. And that's a really perfect point that you just pointed out about the hurt enough, like depends how long you are, you want to suffer in your life and depends mm -hmm. how many traumas that you've been through suffering almost, uh, does lead to transformation in the end they do wake up in their own journey in their own pace um and just depending on where you are so there is hope for everybody um yeah. i will uh, say that i i was a person who needed it's always been consistent with me that i've got to hit just about rock bottom yes i, I i've got to like it's got to be like oh my god i waited way too long but then that snaps me out of it and i I do the action that's been, I wish it wasn't that way. And that could be an aspect of myself that I could be intentional about changing, but that is kind of how it's worked. And in a way it's, it's served me professionally because I can really speak to a lot of the rock bottom stuff that people can relate to and all of that. I, it'd be great if I didn't have to lead by example in every freaking situation. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's certainly, you know, I've been blessed with good health and things like that, but I've definitely had my share of things that, you know, I, I suffered with way too long, or I just let get worse than they needed to get to get to that point where it's like, well, I can't do this even another day. And then that's when, you know, I would snap out of it. So just, yeah. again, depends on the person. Yeah. And I think uh, hitting rock bottom is your greatest gift. I, I think so, because it's, it makes you into a person, you come out stronger. Yeah. Some don't, but then they keep going in it again. And until there's like, no, no more. I yeah. am changing my life. <laughs> yeah. And in that way, things like inspiration, things like the secret and other inspirational videos are great because they do, they give people just a little bit of hope, but, but hope is, hope is good up to a point. Hope has to turn into action at some point, mm -hmm. you know, hope has to turn into a knowing that something's going to happen because you're not going to stop until it does. And that's really what it boils down to. I mean, we can achieve just about any goal we, we want, we just have to not quit. It, it could take, you know, a month, it could take years, but if it's important enough to us and we have to, if we have a lot to learn before we can do the go, okay, well, we learn it. We live in an amazing age where we can learn just about anything on a computer, yeah. you know, that we want to learn. And so, but yeah, you got to be able to invest the time. I mean, we spent many of us, me and myself included, spent, you know, tens of thousands of dollars and, and years in college, for example, to get a degree that I'm no longer really using. I wasn't, I wasn't, I mean, I got a, a degree in telecommunication arts, but I got my experience in the industry from working, not from going to those classes where we're using equipment that was 10 years old and all of that. You know, but the point is we spend tons of money and ton, tons of years to get us where we are. And then people get all weird about spending a couple of years and so a little bit more money on doing whatever they need to do to transform themselves so they can have the rest of their life be exactly what they were hoping for with the initial investment. But they, you know, people are funny. <laughs> well, yeah, you are in a new movie called How Thoughts Become Things. Can you tell us about that? I was watching it this is, the other day, actually, it was really good. It's, it's more of it's more in line with what I'm talking about now in that it's not as much of the energy vibration, what some people call might call woo woo or magical thing, whatever the some of people walk away with from watching the secret. Um, it's more about like I, when I talk in, in the film, I'm talking about rewiring. I'm talking about how, you know, our our brains will just everything that we've talked about, that it's a very it happens here in the physical 
And, and by the way, there's nothing less magical or whatever about things being in the physical either. It's not like everything has to be invisibly manifested for this to be the law of attraction at work. It's, it's, it's all a part of it. We're all just energy and we're experiencing energy in a certain vibration based on how our bodies are built and our senses and things like that. But when we bring somebody into our life, you know, using these principles and they're a real person, that's no less magical than, you know, like suddenly you just you, you know, you manifest an unexpected check or whatever. It's all the same. It's all the same stuff. So this, this film talks more, you know, I guess more in, in the physical and brain science and things like that. How do thoughts actually become things? And ultimately it's going to be because somebody took action on something. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all about, we, we take this thought and then we move into action with it. Um, there was one bit where I was watching, I'm, I'm not sure whether I, I saw that correctly, but, um, they were talking about how, uh, for example, two couple, how two couple are about to get married or something. Um, and the majority of people in, in the, at, the, at the wedding don't like them or don't send them good vibes. And the chances are that they can influence their manifestation and they, uh, they could like sort of split or break up afterwards and I don't know whether I I I heard that right but it was kind of frightening because you know it feels like other people still have the ability to influence your manifestation it's like you know when someone okay someone's ill and they, we have a group healing that's a good way that's a good manifestation of healing mm -hmm. someone but if someone wants bad things for you then do you how do you protect yourself from that I'm not, I am not into that conversation. And I don't remember that part from the movie, but anything about like, I'm going to put a curse on you or whatever. I just, I, I'm not, I don't buy into any of that. I don't see any science on it. It's all speculation, but I will tell you this yeah. in that particular example of the wedding, which I, again, I don't remember that example from the film, but, but if you are aware that people are not on board or it, it's, it all comes down to how are you going to be influenced by those people? your action is going to be, it, you're responsible for that. Mm -hmm. So if you're influenced by the negative opinions of others, or you're, you know, you start to believe that maybe, okay, it's not, maybe this shouldn't be, or you're, you are angry or resentful or any of that stuff. If you let that in, it's going to impact you. Yeah. They were, they instigated a, an energy towards you, but it is your choice to take it on. Mm -hmm. It's your choice. Now, a lot of us, you know, if they're friends and family, it's easier for us to, to, even if we don't want to, to take it on because it's their friends and family. And that's just kind of the dynamic, but it, it, but it doesn't serve you. And so it's part of the, the most, the strongest growth you can do is to not be impacted by the people who are closest to you. If their vision of you is not in alignment with who you want to be, because whatever their opinions are about anything, it's all them. Hmm. they're they're looking at information they're looking at the situation it's running through their machine and these all people may all be in agreement that doesn't make it true it just means that these people are for whatever reason in in an agreement about something but it doesn't make it true about you or your likelihood that the marriage is going to last unless you let it in and hmm. start acting in in, a, in alignment with that so how do you protect yourself as you realize, hey, all that stuff is about them. It's not about me at all. This is their opinion. Maybe they, you know, something triggers them, but I'm not, I'm not going to let it in. And if that's the case, then, then you're, you're going to be fine. But it is, it does take a lot of mindfulness and awareness because it can be insidious. Yeah. And especially you, you don't know what people actually think of you you know so it's good to clear your energy most of the time <laughs> so it's, this is not my energy at all <laughs> that's that's right you do not know what other people are thinking and sometimes they don't even know like i when i first started my my journey i didn't i wasn't conscious of the fact that i had these limiting beliefs about success and money so i mean how could like nobody can tell you your potential because we don't even know our potential yet how can they know they can't. So anybody who tells you anything about what you can or cannot do, it's just BS. You don't have to take any of it at all. If, if you do take it, it's because you've, it, you resonate with it. Like you share that belief for some reason, probably because you've been brought up in an environment that's similar to these people. That's why they're in your space. 
But when you can get conscious to this, all of what we're talking about, and realize that this none of this is truth, I get to create my own truth, something that serves me, then you can begin the work of, you know, learning to block out all of that input from the outside or giving it, you know, no meaning. Mm, mm. Um, there's another question that I wanted to ask you, like, obviously, when people visualizing they have vision boards and all that jazz um they don't seem to manifest things obviously there's healing and other blocks and you know rewiring and all, all everything but there's one thing that they forget to do is surrender how can people bring themselves to surrender and let go or so what detaching yeah yeah so you have to understand, and people get attached all the time, and it's one of the biggest questions, how do we detach and we still want something? We have to understand, first of all, that it's not the thing you want. It is the feeling that you think the thing is going to give you. Everything is driven by feeling. Everything, whether it's the relationship, the possession, you think it's going to make you feel a certain way, abundant, love, passion, whatever. It's about the feeling. So Right now, we have, if you create a vision board and you put certain items on the vision board, it is because you believe that having those things will give you those feelings. That's the only reason they're there. But what's, what it is not important that it is those things. You want the feeling. And the fact of the matter is that those things you put on there may or may not end up giving you that feeling. I give the example of this house. When I first started all of this, I had this you know, we, I started to, how, how can I think bigger for myself? And so we started shopping for homes that were way outside our price range, these million, couple of million dollar homes on lakes and stuff, just so I could get in and feel what it would feel like to take sort of ownership of like, yeah, this is my space. I'm worthy of this space. I'm whatever I was telling myself at the time. And there was a house there that I absolutely fell in love with. But I also knew you can't attach to this house, you know, because you don't know it's giving you the good vibes. So that's what you want to immerse in is the feeling that this imagery is giving you. But if I had made it about that house, I found out years, <clears throat> years later, after we had come into another house where I got all the feelings I wanted, that it had a mold problem. Mm -hmm. So there's always these hidden things. It's like when a person is insistent that I must attract this person into my life to be happy. I have to attract this person because from what they can see, they think that this person is going to give them the feeling of trust and love and whatever, based on what they've seen. But how many times have people gotten into a relationship with people who they think is the one only to find out, oops, there's all this other stuff. Yeah. But they were so attached. No, it has to be that person that they learn the lesson the hard way. And when you are attached to a thing looking a particular way, you miss the universe actually delivering you what you want mm. th that's going to give you the feeling people just push it aside and say i don't see how can this get me where where i want to go well guess what it's not up to you to decide that and if you think that you're smarter than universal intelligence you are wrong and so us trying to make sense out of how things show up if if we are in the flow if we're really doing this if we're clear on who we want to be and if our thoughts are predominantly about how we want to feel and who we want to be, then we can trust that what comes to us is something to be looked at, take action on or whatever, get learn something from rather than pushing it away, going, no, no, it's not that it has to look like that on my vision board it has to look like this. Otherwise, I'm not interested. And that is the surrender part. It's not about not wanting what you want, but it's about being really clear about what is it that you really want? You really want a feeling, not the item or the person or the money. You think it's going to give it to you, but when you attach to that, it gets dangerous. Yeah. So it ultimately comes down to self love, doesn't it? Um, so what you feel about yourself, because so most of the time they, they, um, most of the people often want these things as well because they feel that void inside of them. So it's like, look at looking into mirror. I know you're going to say, I know you're going to say that you, not many people <laughs> can do that, <laughs> but it's, it's a possibility. If one person can do that, so many people can do that as well. And like, you know, when you're writing a list of uh, a person you want to manifest is something that you said in the 300 wish uh, um, wish list that mm -hmm. uh, you know I mean um, that you have to become that person you know you have to become the person you are you want to manifest into your life well pretty well, at least you have to be you have to be the person you want to be in the relationship mm -hmm. right not and not like put on a show you have to be authentic 
if you're going to attract the, the right mate, that it's going to last, then who you're presenting to the world has to be authentically you. And if you're not happy with who you authentically are, then you need to, yes, you need to develop that so that you are that person, so that you don't, that you can find fulfillment and happiness and peace, wholeness without another person needing to fill in the blanks. Mm -hmm. Because when you depend on another person to fill in some hole that you're feeling, oh, you get all codependent and it, it's just, it's a freaking mess. And it's what most, a lot of people do. You know, so, so when you're really good with yourself and a partner is an addition, not trying to fill in a blank, you know, that's when it really, that's when it can really be magical. Mm, that's, I, I totally agree with that. Now, you know, going back to rewiring, what prompted your sudden interest in uh, and focus on rewiring? Yeah, it's interesting because what the beginning of it was me reading the science of getting rich again after like 20 years, the Wallace mm -hmm. D. Waddles book. And that's actually the book that was given to Rhonda Byrne that prompted the whole thing. So the science of getting rich, while it does not talk about rewiring or neuroplasticity or anything like that, it definitely does drive home the point about defining who you're going to be and being that and not not you don't have the luxury of dwelling in negative thinking you know, and rationalizing all of this. And so I got that. And then I really, it just sort of connected the dots that what we're really talking about is how our brain works. So even though that's not what was in the book, that is what prompted it and got my attention going over to, to that, that combined with 20 years of teaching law of attraction with vibration and energy and sort of the, you know, woo woo conversation. And it just flying over the heads for most people or people just trying to embrace it, but just not getting results because they're trying to get it to work like a magic wand or something like that. They're just, you know, so rather than asking people to take these leaps of faith about how the universe will match your vibration and all of this other stuff, let's just talk about where reality really gets created. And that is in the moment you give it meaning. And that happens in your brain, which is based on your wiring and your wiring can be changed through certain very specific processes of repetition, et cetera. You can do it. So let's just focus on that. Because when you do that, when you get clear on who you're being and you act consistently with that, then the vibe you put out is just going to happen automatically. No vision board required, no any of that, no worrying about a technique, no, no practice other than this is just who you be. And the world shows up because that's how you're interacting with your environment and meeting people and presenting yourself and what you're putting out there. You're just going to logically get what you want because you're acting in alignment with the person who has it. Right. So what is the, like, if uh, I know quite a lot of audiences would be, would, would be really interested in, oh, I'm stuck in this situation or my, my own rewiring. What are the steps that they can take? Well, first uh, they have to know where they want to go. I mean, you know, if they if they feel stuck, that's that's one thing. But we get stuck and then we just keep looking at our stuckness, which only makes it worse. So I'm stuck. I'm stuck. So that's your conversation. So stop saying that. Tell yourself something different. And if you need inspiration, just look out into the world and see who is doing something similar to what you're doing and seeming to have a good time with it, having success. Like I'm not asking you to duplicate to be somebody else specifically, but find those qualities in these other people that you would like to have in yourself so that you can begin to cultivate them so that you can begin to visualize yourself as having those traits. If you don't now, again, this process is going to seem weird. It's going to seem like you're lying to yourself. It's going to seem uncomfortable slash hard to see yourself being something that you're not because you're not wired for that. That's natural. So give yourself a freaking break. People beat themselves. I should know this already. I've been studying this for, okay. Now stop beating yourself up because every time you do that, you just reinforce the old wiring. You have to be willing to give up those old conversations, even though they're really familiar and seem automatic and true. You have to give up the old conversations and create new ones consistently, no matter how uncomfortable it feels at first. And that's why you need support. And that's why you can you know, go to YouTube or whatever and get the inspiration and see that there are other people who were probably in a worse situation than you at the beginning and somehow still accomplish these great things because mm -hmm. they changed who they were being and they got different results. If they can do it, so can you, but you just have to remain consistent. You have to know why you're doing it so that when it gets complicated or tough or the people around you start, you know, resisting it, you know why you're going to keep going forward no matter what they do or no matter how complicated it gets because you know how good it's going to be on the other side. 
Is it true? I was reading somewhere um, that is it, is it true that it takes 66 days for uh, for a new habit to form into your subconscious? I've heard mind? so many 21, 30, yeah. 45, 60. I, I don't I, I know. Do, I do 100 just to be on the safe side. <laughs> just it, it's just just remember that everybody, if you're not conscious of this, then you are reinforcing this stuff every single day. So you've reinforced habits and ways of thinking and ways of being for literally years, not 60 days or whatever, mm -hmm. not even 365 days. So you've got some really powerful wiring in there. Mm -hmm. So be gentle with yourself, be intentional, but remember that emotion, strong, strong emotion drives this, this brain change faster than if you're just kind of looking at a vision board or whatever and not feeling anything. So the, again, the more amped up you can get about why you want to be this, what the impact is going to be on the world and yourself and how just life in general is going to be better, the value you put out there, get emotional about it. That's going to cause different chemistry in your brain. It's going to happen faster. Mm, mm, okay, thank you for that. I, I'm sure many of our listeners um, would, you know, I know, I, I, you know me, I just run faster than I can. <laughs> and, and I was like, I want to change my life. So if I'm doing any affirmations, like I'm enough or anything, I put specifically put on, it's like, okay, I need to do it for at least 66 days, and maybe 100 days just to be on the safe side. I just want to add to that. Let me just add to that, that it's like, you know, telling yourself these things and doing affirmations and saying this is definitely a part of it. But people wait way too longer than they need to, to actually start acting in alignment with the things they're telling themselves. They say, well, when I have the money, then I'll be more bold about this. Or mm -hmm. when I, whatever, when I get this, then I'll, there are so many opportunities for you to go ahead and do the thing or at least some version of it now and not wait. Mm -hmm. The sooner you can act in alignment with the person that you're saying that you're creating, whether it's 66 or 100 days, you could start on day two to, to respond differently out here, physicalize it, put it in your body, say a different thing, write a different thing, do something and not just wait for 100 days to happen. And if you do that, it will happen faster. Mm, mm, totally get it. So uh, we're we're coming to an end uh, now. I've got a couple of uh, questions from uh, our audiences, and I'll quickly just go through them. This is my favorite one, the first one. So uh, this is from Derma, and he asked, "How do you find the perfect balance between surrender and inspired action?" I don't know that it's so much of a balance thing. Surrender is just it's either you know, you just need to surrender 100% and you need to take inspired action 100%. I mean, to, to make this thing efficient. I mean, if you're holding on to any of the attachment, it's always going to slow things down. The, but the more action you take, the, you know, the more inspired action you take, the hopefully the more confidence that you'll have that you're doing the right things, you'll take these actions and you'll let go of the surrender. If you can just understand that when we, there's a lot of goal setting things out there that say, mm. put a specific date on your desire, right? Specific dollar amount, think and grow rich is filled with this stuff. And, and I just know for a fact that does not work for some people because immediately they start thinking about, they look at the calendar and they're all in their resistance, you know, and it feels like attachment. They're attached to that date. They're attached to that dollar amount. And if for whatever reason, it doesn't think it doesn't, look like it's going to show up, then their whole paradigm collapses. This stuff doesn't work. I did exactly what they said. And they put unrealistic uh, um, expectations on themselves. Now, some people it works. That's the thing. Some people that works great. Other people it doesn't. And I think that those people know who they are. And I just ask these people to be gentle on themselves and just trust that things will happen at the, at the divine timing, the right timing, as long as you are consistently taking inspired action and stay detached to the best of your ability and stop, you know, obsessing over a calendar date or a dollar amount because some people that just does not serve it. They just freak out and can't get past anything. Mm, oh, beautifully said totally agree this is one is from yinka and she says do you ever feel fear in what you do talking on like talking on stage no. if you do how do you master it anything else 
I, I don't. Yeah, I, look, I definitely have fear about things. Not, not so much talking on stage, but a great example is like uh, music, playing music. It's one of my, it's, I love to play the ukulele. It's something I do literally hours a day, but I rarely do it for people mm -hmm. because I have the whole judgment thing. I don't want people to think I'm any less better than I am. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I'll be in a flow when I'm not recording or if I'm not streaming. And then if I go live, suddenly I freak out and do this other stuff. So it just depends. Sometimes I go, Bob, you know, just do it. You'll get into the flow. If you want to do this, there's no other way to get good at this than to do it because I had mastered it a long time ago. 10 years ago, I was doing open mics. I didn't have any fear, but then after a while I didn't do it and you just lose the muscle. The neuro, the, the neural pathways had not grown in enough to undo the wiring of the fear. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's really about like, why am I really doing this? Am I doing this because I love playing the ukulele and sharing it? Or do I need validation that I'm good? Mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's really like, if, so if it's a stage thing, it's like, the reason I don't get scared on stage is because I do know it is not about me. It is about the message that I'm here to give. Now, that's not to say that the first five minutes of being on stage, I'm not you know, sweating and all in my head and probably talking weird. But then I get into the flow. Hmm. You know, then once that message starts coming through me, there is no nerves. There's no anything. It's just I'm just being 100 percent present and I'm just saying what is there to say. And, you know, there's enough of me, Bob Doyle, the silly guy in there to interject some humor and find opportunities to interact and things like that. But I don't get scared about audiences. Probably it may be because early in my career, like right after The Secret, one of my first onstage things was I went to Russia and I spoke for 10,000 people. It's like after that is like, try to scare me. I mean, wow. that I, I had not, I have not been in, in, in that kind of a live environment, even though I know millions of people saw the secret or whatever, I don't, you know, I don't think about it in that way. I still haven't got my head wrapped around that, but, mm. but, you know, in terms of just the fear that was immersion. So mm. but in comparison, 300, 500, a thousand is, you know, it's just no big deal, but it's, it's ultimately a mind game. Yeah. Just and really I would love to get, get really 2000, <laughs> 3000, 4000. <laughs> Hundred million. You, you know you will. <laughs> I know. I'm gonna manifest it. Okay. One last question. Uh, this is from Dav. Uh, what's the weirdest law of attraction idea you have experienced that actually worked? The weirdest law, like the thing that I thought, I wonder if I can manifest this, and it actually worked. Mm -hmm. Well, so I use this early example that this is kind of abstract. It's the first thing that comes to mind. There's probably others. But when I first started this, I wanted a, um, a piece of exercise equipment called the Bowflex. I was just getting out of my, my, my professional uh, focus at the time was fitness. I was a personal trainer and, and I was, I had quit my job to work at home. So I wasn't going to the gym anymore. So I wanted a piece of exercise equipment and the commercials for the Bowflex really, you know, got me excited. I just didn't want to buy one. So I reached out to, so I put it on my background wallpaper on my computer. So this was like my vision board and I'm just seeing myself having it. I'm imagining, I'm doing all the law of attraction stuff. What's weird about it is that I ended up on the phone with somebody from Bowflex and just sort of just basically didn't ask. Now, what was weird about it was that this guy who is representing this fitness company was in the drive through at Burger King ordering crap to eat, you know, and this was the, the Bowflex guy or whatever. So that to me was was interesting in that conversation in a most unlikely conversation. He said, just tell me where to send it. <laughs> so I and I did. So, you know, I had had Amazing. I had had the the my my focus, you know, I, I've been able to say, hey, for the past two years, I've been doing physique transformation online. I've been sharing my progress. I've done various exercise programs and I would like to feature my progress with the Bowflex. So it's basically like just taking what I had done and said, how can I leverage my experience, my expertise and my passion to 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 bring value to them? Mm. Right. It's like he didn't just give it to me because he felt good that day. I like I offered something in exchange for that. But still, to me, that was a huge law of attraction win to just go from wanting this thing that I, you know, just did, I, I just I don't even know where I was in my expectation of receiving it. Mm -hmm. But but it was just so easy. I think that was the yeah. that was the wow, this stuff, you know, yeah. is pretty amazing.
brilliant i love it okay so before we get into one last message and contact details and the work that you do now i really want to ask you rep- rapid fire questions i do this with all of my guests so this is very this isn't uh long you can make it long because obviously we would uh love uh to have your input your knowledge and experience okay so are you ready i guess let's find yeah. out let's do it uh okay so what is your definition of god did all that is brilliant how do you define religion and spirituality i i define religion i guess as man's um attempt to make meaning out of all that is in a way that serves their particular agenda or belief system and in a way i think spirituality in its sort of marketed form is just almost like another form of that. They they're still got their dogma. They've still got their like, no, this is how you be spiritual. Oh no, this is how you be spiritual. Mm-hmm. It's not that different in its essence. It's still a way for man to try to organize all of this stuff into a belief system that they can function with. Mm, beautifully put. What's the lesson that took you the longest to learn? uh i do not have to be a one-man show to manifest oh beautiful love it do you believe there is an end to healing an end to healing healing like hey i'm all done yeah is there a point we get to another dimension or something and it just we're done well until i get there it's all pure speculation (laughs) isn't it I mean, I really think that, you know, being being a human presents a whole and this is another great thing from Science of Getting Rich, too. It's like it really puts the perspective in that the reason that we are here is so that the universe, this ocean of energy can experience itself, experience itself in this unique way that we have as humans. I mean, it's all just energy, but in human form and in this with this configuration of energy, the universe gets to experience all the emotions, the triumphs, the failures, the whole contrast thing. You know, it just it gets to experience everything that way, which is why getting what you want in your life and having the life you want has nothing to do with deserving. You're here to do it. You are here to do it. We've given we've been given every tool we need to create exactly what we want in our life. And that's what we would be doing if we if somewhere along the line, man hadn't decided to try to control other people or limit other people or whatever. We got all these crazy ideas about limitation and, and it's thousands of years of it. And so now we're having to reawaken to, you know, to our divine nature of, of, of being creators. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with you. So this is one last question. It's the uh, where is end, end of rapid fire. But uh, what is that one message that you would like to share with someone who's going through adversity right now, who's finding it hard to manifest or dark night of the soul, hard times? What is that one message you would tell them? Well, the good news is, is that, you know, the, you're, the experience you're having and the darkness you're feeling and all of these things, again, it's just chemicals going on in your brain based on wiring that you've developed that is, cre- that is having you create meaning out of situations. And it is having you take actions that are consistent with somebody who has those situations in their life. And until you change that wiring, you will probably attract more of those situations and perpetuate this. So the good news is the first thing you need to do is decide who do I want to be that isn't this? What's the gap between between who I'm being now and the person I'd really like to be. What does that person's life look like? How does that person respond to this situation that I am responding negatively to or feeling hopeless about? You know, you have to start defining that and activating new parts of your brain. You just absolutely have to do it, but you can. That's the good news is that we, even though we may not be as as uh, plastic as we were when we were kids, just taking everything like a sponge, you know, the evidence is there that well into our advanced age, our brain can still change. We can still have an impact on how we perceive the world, thus what actions we take, thus what re- what results we get. Mm. Mm, oh, we totally agree. Thank you so much. And if you are struggling with anything right now, um, you know, just just hang in there. I, I guess like, you know, I've been there myself and I know it's really hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And one day you'll look back and uh, see that it was just one piece in the bigger picture, right? 
um but all this work that you have to do in between it's all up to you it's all on your hands okay so uh we're on, we're coming to an end now uh mr bob i love calling you mr bob it's like a, a respect <laughs> I, I i get that from some people i i get mr robert sometimes i'm like hey, just just bob is fine yeah um so what is the work that you're doing now and how can people contact you so I'm really, it's all about helping people rewire now to get conscious to the fact that they can, then helping them define how they want to, and then giving them so the support they need to be able to do it. Because like I said, it's one thing to know that you can, but actually doing it takes a ridiculous amount of consistency and support and feedback and, and detachment and just all kinds of things that most people aren't willing to do because they don't believe it's possible. So my goal here is to say it's just to get them to see it is possible people do it all the time and it can happen for you so who do you want to be so i guess one of the the first things people can do to sort of get on the same rewire page that we you know kind of been talking about is i do have a free webinar about rewiring and and how we got there in the first place it might give people some you know further insights than to what we just talked about and they can do that at meetbobdoyle.com slash rewire um I think that's that's base, that's a good start. We have something coming up soon that will be an ongoing uh, offering called the Balanced Living Challenge. So depending on when this comes out, uh, that's something that they can look for. That is a hands-on 45 days. You're in it. It's an everyday interaction with me and getting that support. That's doing it, doing the work, defining who you want to be, learning how to become undetached, getting into a habit of you know that's daily so that the wiring does begin to change so that's just sort of a 45 day get in there and the skill set you learn from that it's not about it's not about necessarily manifesting a certain thing at the end of 45 days like we've done in past versions of this challenge it is about acquiring the skill set to become aware and make a different choice that right there is the most powerful freaking tool and, and skill you can have because it be, everything's infinite after that. When you can stop the automatic, when you can recognize the, the automatic wiring and how it hasn't served you and begin to create new wiring where potential is literally unlimited, that's that's the skill set I want to teach more than anything else. Uh, so when's that uh, coming out? Do you have a date or anything? Start it, we're going to start in March 2021 mm -hmm. is when we begin this. And so any, any time after that, people should be able to, to find that. Oh, fantastic fantastic uh thank you so much for coming on this podcast mr bob i absolutely love you <laughs> and, likewise the feelings yeah. mutual uh thank you um is there any last message that you would like to say only that everything i said is true to the best of my ability to the best of my knowledge and so this so there is absolutely no matter what your situation is there is hope the journey you have ahead of you to change that is going to be different than literally everybody else on the planet. So make sure that you, you know, do whatever you need to do or seek the support you need to seek so that you can create that vision of who you'd love to become and why. Beautifully said. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you so much for listening to Soul Awakenings with Madhya Sosan podcast. I would love to know what your biggest takeaway from this conversation has been. Share your thoughts on my Facebook and Instagram, Madhya Sosan. You can also check out my website, madhyasosan.com. Calm. If you would like to watch this episode, then head over to my YouTube channel, Mads Corner, M-A-D-Z Corner. If you enjoyed this episode, then please do rate and share this with your family and friends. Thank you once again, and I will see you on the next episode.